Thank you, witnesses, for your attendance today. Uh, to Chief Davis, given your decades of police service in numerous cities and towns, various provinces, and indigenous reserves in both southern and northern Ontario, I would like to hear your opening thoughts on the impact of policing and community safety if the current version of Bill C-5 passes without amendment. Thank you for the question, uh, Mr. Brock. As I mentioned in my opening, there's already frustration from the victims of crime with bail reform. Uh, the perception from the victims is that the criminals' rights supersede those of citizens. With C-5 and the proposed changes, now we're going to see the sentencing become a joke, to be quite candid. The victims of crime will not... Let me rephrase that. The victims of crime will have the perception that their rights have once again been superseded or, or sorry, uh, given to the, the rights of the criminal. Also, uh, I'm very concerned that what we're seeing with Indigenous populations, my experience on reserve and my experience off reserve of the, uh, urban Indigenous populations, there's always already a layer of distrust with the police and the justice system, and we have to work really hard to get people to cooperate with us. And now, and I've experienced this, where when the justice system is perceived to fail them because the criminal's rights supersede those of the victim, Thank you, Chief. I'm yeah. going to move on because my time is limited. Okay. Bill C-5 removes limitations placed on the use of conditional sentences of imprisonment. Offenses such as sex assault, arson, crim harassment, kidnapping, trafficking of persons, abduction of persons under 14, and prison breach are now open for consideration. Can you comment on how this will impact community safety in the context of the offenses I just read out? I'd also like to hear your opinion on the deterrent impact of conditional sentences and the reality on the street when it comes to compliance and enforcement of those orders. So again, just to reiterate that the, the criminals are going to operate with impunity, that we already have uh, weak bail conditions. This will, those will be exacerbated by weak sentences. Sentences, are essentially, conditional sentences are so they can serve at the comforts of their home. That's not a sentence. They'll be able to operate. And when you look at the list of 742.1 sub F, it's perplexing that criminal harassment, we heard the earlier speakers talk about the, the uh, intimidation, the harassment that goes on by the criminals, sexual assault, kidnapping that we see tied to the drug industry with firearms being involved, the trafficking in persons. If we're serious about human trafficking, we're going to allow a house arrest to happen for a human trafficker? Uh, it makes no sense. Opponents of the mandatory minimum penalties argue that they unjustly limit judicial discretion, have little or no deterrent effect, and can result in disproportionate sentencing. The government argues that we should trust our judges across our country to do the right thing, to hold offenders accountable while at the same time promoting community safety. I'd like to hear your thoughts based on your experience both on the judicial issue and the deterrent impact of eliminating mandatory minimum penalties, particularly within the firearm context. Uh, first with the judicial uh, impact, uh, the question about the trust the judges and there'll be consistency. There is no consistency. My experience from southern Ontario to northern Ontario, night and day. Uh, my experience from Ontario to western Ontario when I was serving in Alberta, night and day. So the belief that there be consistency amongst the judges uh, is not founded in the reality I've observed throughout my career with respect to the impact uh, of eliminating, or sorry, turning uh, sentences into conditional sentences. Again, I think the justice system is going to be brought into disrepute. People will operate with impunity. The victim's rights are going to be given away for the, to, uh, for the rights of the criminal. The other, sorry, one last point. Yep. Is the enforcement of conditions requires police resources to do those compliance checks, which we're not funded for. And if, there, if we're going to have house arrest, there has to be a rigorous compliance program, which at this point, there, uh, most police services, I believe, would struggle to have the resources to do, do an effective job of that compliance okay. check. Okay. Thank you, Chief. I've got basically a minute and a half. The government has argued since introducing the bill that mandatory minimum penalties have the disproportionate impact of the over-incarceration of Indigenous offenders, both males and especially females, and other marginalized populations. 
Given my prior legal career as a Crown attorney, I am particularly cognizant of the over-incarceration issue. I'd like to hear your thoughts on this and the efforts, particularly in Ontario, of the impact of the Indigenous People Court, or commonly known as Gladue Court, in under one minute, please. There's a time and place for Gladue. Gladue considerations do make sense, and I support Gladue uh, considerations for the offenses that are lower in, in nature. But when we're talking about using firearms in the commissions of an offense, the trafficking of drugs, the importation of drugs, the production of drugs that, that impact communities, those are crimes for which Gladue, uh, it makes no sense to apply them, especially when the victims are Indigenous as well. And so there's a time and place for Gladue, but for the offenses uh, that are suggested to have the minimums removed, it makes no sense. Very quickly, what is the perception of law-abiding Indigenous residents on the Six Nations of the Grand River as it applies to Gladue Court? Again, I don't speak for Six Nations. It's the lar largest community based on population, so there are varying opinions. My experience when I worked there in dealing with Indigenous people from Six Nations in Brantford... Go ahead. ...is... Sorry. Is, is much, much, myself. Much, much like I said. Uh, there's a time and place for Gladue, but if the uh, people committing the crimes are Indigenous and it's impacting our people, then the Gladue considerations, uh, they're moot because they're, they're harming our own people. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Brock, and thank you uh, to our witness.